Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly broadcast. As always, we are delighted to be with you today and excited that you decided to join us today. We are continuing in the book of Genesis. Last week we talked about Genesis 14 um, concerning covenant relationship and the tithe. So now we're going to be in Genesis 15. So if you have your Bibles, please feel free to join us in your Bibles. So as we go forward in this particular lesson today, uh, if you will focus on the, the way it's structured, the way it's laid out, if you want to understand the promises of God, if you want to understand uh, what relationship you've got to have with God, what God requires of us, and, and exactly how God operates or a covenant or promise with God operates, today is a good day for you to pay very close attention to this particular lesson. As you examine the scripture, you will find that this is the very foundation uh, concerning all the promises of God. When it comes to God, when it comes to God keeping his promises, when it comes to God doing what's uh, required of him and letting us know what's required of us, this is the foundational chapter that helps you to understand when you study it, to understand the promises of God. Amen. And I like this chapter because it reminds us that when God promises a thing, you know, we may not be able to see it. We may not be able to understand it or try to figure out how it's going to happen. But this is a reminder that when God speaks a thing, it's for generations, not just for us, but it's for generations. And he is going to perform it. And he does not need our help or our understanding. But remember, as you read this episode of, with Abram, remember all the promises that God is giving you. And, and they, if they have not come to pass yet, this is an encouragement that they, they are still yes, yes, and amen. So if you look at this 15th chapter, look at that first verse, if you will. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, mm -hmm. saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. God started the conversation by uh, letting Abram know who he was mm -hmm. in regards to his relationship with Abram. He said, I am thy shield. Yes. Uh, think about what it means when you talk about a shield. That's a protector. Mm -hmm. That's someone that covers it. So God said, I'm your covering. I am uh, your protection. He went on to say, I'm your exceeding great reward. And in plain words, God was saying, when it comes to rewards, your reward is not in things, but your reward is in me. Mm -hmm. In other words, having me on your side is a reward that is not able to be, uh, be used up. I love the fact that God didn't say, I have your reward. No, right. God said, I am your reward. My, my, what a great, great expression of the position God has when he makes a promise to us. Amen. And I think about you, like you said, he's our protection. He is our shield. So a lot of times we may feel, especially in this era, this world, that, you know, God, how are we going to be um, taken care of? There's so many things, so many darts, not just, you know, the everyday life, but even spiritual wickedness. But God reminds us that he is our shield. We don't have to have a whole lot of shields. We don't have to live in a fortress. We don't have to go underground for a season, but he is our shield. And if he is our shield, we have no nothing to worry about. All we have to do is keep our confidence in him, keep our trust in him, and believe that he is going to protect us. You look at that second verse, you said, Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And he said, the steward of my house, meaning uh, one of his servants, is uh, this Eleazar of Damascus. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, behold, to me thou hast given no seed. Mm -hmm. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir, mm -hmm. which was the custom in that day, meaning that if your wife could not have children, then the uh, servants or those ones that served under you, uh, the ones that were in the highest position, uh, uh, they would have a, a, a child, mm -hmm. a son, and he would become the heir of your uh, of your um, uh, of your estate. Mm -hmm. And he said, "And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, right. but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir." Look at the way God said it: mm -hmm. uh, He that comes out of thine own bowels shall be 
thine heir. Mm -hmm. And you know what sticks out to me in this particular verse? If you notice, first it says that God told Abraham, I am thy reward. Mm -hmm. But then Abraham follows it up. Well, what are you going to give me, God? I know that you're my reward, but he also was expecting something else. And it takes me to Hebrews 11 and 6, which is apostles, one of his favorite Very scriptures. Bad. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so abraham understood this principle he said yes god is his reward but he said okay i also he's also going to reward me because i've diligently seeked him so we remember although god says look i'm your reward abraham still expected something he said what you're going to give me god so it's nothing wrong with expecting god to reward you because if we believe that he is then as a believer that's the least we can do how can we say we believe him and never expect him anything from him for living a life for believing and trusting in him so the father of our faith taught us a very principle of looking for those things of looking for those rewards and not just looking for them but expecting them so when you go to the next verse she says uh, to Abram he said uh, he brought him for the bride and said to him mm -hmm. look now toward heaven Right. And tell the number or the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. In other mm -hmm. words, God wanted Abram to visualize mm -hmm. the promise. Right. He wanted Abram. Abram said, well, what are you going to give me, Lord? He, <laughs> God started out on the big end. What I appreciate about God is he will give you the great big ending mm -hmm. at the beginning. That's true. I remember when he was dealing with me uh, some 45 years ago when he shared certain things with me, I thought they were going to happen right then. Mm -hmm. I thought of my God, I'm going to be all over the world. I'm going to be teaching and preaching the gospel, the good news mm -hmm. all over the world. I'm going to be training disciples. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing all these great things for God all over the world. And I thought within my, my little feeble mind, <laughs> right. I thought it was going to happen within the next one or two years, maybe three years at the, the most. most. Yeah. Here we're talking 45 years later and I'm now just beginning to walk in the fullness of what God said some 45 years ago. So do not be discouraged yes. if what God has promised you has not happened yet. God is setting the stage to yes. bless you. God is setting the stage to use you. God is setting the stage for everything he promised you to come to pass, but you've got to keep the faith. Mm -hmm. You've got to believe God. You know, I, I think about uh, my life over the last 45 years, and I have been knocked flat on my back and on my face so many times that I can't even count them. Mm -hmm. I can tell you I have failed so many times, mm -hmm. but because I've never lost the faith, I don't care how low it was, That's I right. don't care how far from him I strayed, I always kept the faith in God, and my faith is what kept me. So no matter how low, no matter how hard, no matter how rough things were, I always knew that God was my God, and what he said he was going to do, he was going to do. So you see, although I had a lot of uh, failed things to happen in my life, it's the grace of God. It's mm -hmm. the promises of God that made me not a failure. Mm -hmm. Oh, you may have some things you come short in. You may have some failures. Uh, I mean, some 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 things that 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 fail in your life. Mm -hmm. But God never looks at you as a failure. Mm -hmm. If you are a child of God, regardless of your place in Him right now, mm -hmm. God is going to bless you. God's never going to leave you. You may leave Him, but mm -hmm. God never leaves you. Amen. And we have to be careful to not to limit God or doubt God determining where, as far as how he's going to bless us, determining where we are now. I think about Ephesians verse um, chapter 3 and 20. You know, it tells us, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think, but it's according to the power that worketh in us. Can you imagine how Abraham felt when he told him to look at the stars and, you know, your seed is going to outnumber these? And he didn't he have a seed at the, that time. So we have to be careful that we don't leave, you know, God saying in doubt. Like, I can't 
he received one thing. You're talking about this, you know, innumerable thing. So remember, even in Abraham's situation, God showed him the ending, like Apostle was saying, before the beginning even truly got started with his seed. So regardless of what we see with our natural eye, we got to go beyond that in faith, realizing that the, according to the power that work in the me, that's how this is going to come to pass because God is not going to force these things on, on us. He will not force a blessing on us. He won't say, no, you got to receive this. But we have to position our faith. We have to position our minds and say, you know what, God? It's above all I can ask. It's above all I can think. It's even above all I can imagine. And it's according to the power that you have given me and with your Holy Spirit that I believe that these things are going to come to pass. Now, now look at that sixth verse. It says, and he, talking about Abram, believed in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he, talking about God, counted it to him for righteousness. So what was the righteousness of Abraham? I mean, he actually lied concerning his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, actually uh, uh, tried to help God out, he and Sarah. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, different things in his life that didn't line up with works uh, of righteousness. Right. But you see, we are not saved by works mm -hmm. of righteousness. Anyone can obey for a season the works of righteousness or do what God commands to be done. Mm -hmm. But we are saved by faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he believed in the Lord yes. and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. There is absolutely no work that you can do to earn your right to be in heaven. Amen. I don't care if you preach 78,000 times a year. <laughs> I don't care if every time you stand up, wings pop out your back and a, a halo oh, pops over, over your head. It makes no difference if you're able to feed all the hungry in the world. Mm -hmm. makes no difference if you're able to visit all the sick. and, and all. No matter what works you are doing, they will never save you you. You are saved not by your works, but you're saved by your faith. That's right. You believe in God. Now, now a thing that, that really plays in my spirit, and I'm going to share this with you so that you can really begin to change your mindset mm -hmm. when it comes to God. Remember, you do not obey God and then believe him. That's right. No, you believe God, and because you believe him, there are certain things that you do. Recognize that it, you are not saved because you're so pretty. You're not <laughs> saved because uh, you're the right color. Right. You are not saved because you are the right size or mm -hmm. you're in the right church. That is not why you are saved. Mm -hmm. You are saved because you believe yes. in the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe he is your Lord. He is your Savior. And listen, mm -hmm. you didn't make the first step toward God. God made the first step toward you. Amen. And I love the part, like you said, what keeps sticking out about that verse, it says, and he believed. That's all he did. That's what God is asking us to do. Trust him and believe. That's all he requires of us in terms of receiving his promises. It's by faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So build your faith. And the way you build your faith is hear more of the word of God. And we were talking about earlier this week about sometimes we can get consumed with what's going on around us. And what we are what we eat. If I consume the world and all the problems of the world, then that's what I'm going to be. But we have to be encouraged in the fact that if I eat faith, if I eat the word of God, that nothing can turn me around. Nothing can stop me from thinking, feeling, and knowing that God is here, that God is going to move. So remember, all it takes to believe, to build your faith, is making sure you're getting in the word of God. So as you get into the word, mm -hmm. then it builds your confidence mm -hmm. in the things that God has said. Because listen, uh, God will do what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. I like what I said in Numbers. Uh, the statement is made in the book of Numbers mm -hmm. uh, that God is not mm -hmm. a man that he should lie, mm -hmm. nor the son of man that he should repent. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of uh, people today say, well, where is the Lord? Why? I hadn't seen him yet. He said this is going to happen and that's going to happen and he's mm -hmm coming back and why why need why is he waiting with the conditions the way they are now he needs to hurry up and come on back well the bible tells us in i believe it's uh, first peter it lets us know the reason he is delaying mm -hmm. is because of his long suffering yes. god is not slack yes, concerning yes. his promises mm -hmm. but he is long suffering to us word why is he long suffering toward us he is not willing for anyone to perish mm -hmm. listen it is not the will 
of God that you fail. Amen. It is not the will of God that you come short. It is not the will of God that you be destroyed. And this is going to hurt a lot of religious traditional people. Mm -hmm. It is not the will of God that you go to hell. Amen. God wants you in his heaven. God wants you walking in his promises. God wants you doing what he uh, wants you to do. He told Abram here in that seventh verse, mm -hmm. he said, I'm the Lord that brought thee uh, out of Ur of Chaldees to mm -hmm. give thee this land to inherit it. Mm -hmm. He said, you may have thought you were following your own instruction. Okay. It was your strength that brought you out of, uh, out of Ur of Chaldees. But God said, it was my strength. Mm -hmm. God said, I'm the one that gave you the ability to walk in faithfulness toward me. Mm -hmm. He went on to say, uh, 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 Abram went on to say, well, Lord, uh, God, where, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? You've got to study the background mm -hmm. of this particular episode to understand the fullness of it. Listen, Abram had been in the promised land for 10 years. Mm -hmm. He, he started out, he was 75, now he's 85 years old, and yet he's not seen the promises. He's living in a land that others possess. That's right. He did not have a place to call home. When Sarah died, he didn't even have a place to bury her. He had to buy some land to bury her in, in what God said belonged already to him. Mm -hmm. Listen, you need to understand that many of the promises God has made to you, they may be occupied by, by someone, someone else. Amen. That does not change the plan, the power, the glory, nor the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Recognize that God is all-powerful, mm -hmm. omnipotent. God is all-knowing, om omniscient. God is, is, is all everywhere all the time, omnipotent. Mm -hmm. God is that kind of God. You know, I'm reminded many times mm -hmm. of, of uh, Job. You know, everybody mm -hmm. talks about how Job was, you know, he really poor old Job and what he went through, and he stood, and he he continued to have faith in God. But the Bible tells us around that thirty sixth or thirty seventh mm -hmm. chapter that that Job began to question God. He began to say, "God, what kind of righteousness is this that a man like me, who has served you, mm -hmm. has had to suffer so many things?" And 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 God, is, we are not uh, unlike Job in many That's ways. Right. I have many times mm -hmm. I have gone to God and said, "God, why did I have to go through this? Right. Why have I had to deal with this?" Why has this happened to me? Mm -hmm. And God uh, takes me all the way back to what he told Job. Mm -hmm. Read that 38th, 39th, 40th, 41st, and, uh, and 42nd chapter of Job. When you read them, mm -hmm. you hear God say something that I always it always comes to mind now when I began to murmur and complain mm -hmm. about the delayed promises of God. You know what God told Job? God said to Job, asked Job a question. He said, where were you <laughs> when I created Amen. the entire universe? Verse. Okay. And he goes into details about so many things. He said, where were you when I caused the water not to overflow the land? Mm -hmm. Just go just so far. Mm -hmm. Where were you when I, with my own hands, scooped out the valleys and, mm -hmm. and pushed up the mountains? Where were you when I caused the animals to operate and, and flow the way they were? Where were you when I caused it to rain where no person, no living man is, but I still made it rain there? Where were you when I caused the sun to shine mm -hmm. wherever I please for it to say, if you are so wise, if you are so great, and you feel like that your salvation deserves so much credit for what you're doing, he said, where were you when I created all things? Darling, sometimes we need to recognize that if God made it, then God knows how to fix it. If God created it, then God knows what to do. Remember, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, every single thing that you can see with the the natural eye was created and formed by the word of God. Amen. It may have been the extended word, but everything came from the word of God. God said, let there be, Amen. and there was. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. See, God does not need to have something uh, to create something. Amen. God creates something from nothing. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself. You may feel like you're a nobody. Mm -hmm. That's all right. That's the best stuff that God can work with because when he works with a nobody, he knows that he won't have to be concerned with them getting big-headed and trying to feel like they did all this they or they're, they're all of that in a bag of chips. Amen. And but what I love about that verse in particular, my uh, spirit is leaping because it's good to me too. It says, to give thee this land to inherit it. For 
first he says to give this land, but he also says to inherit it. So it was about positioning. It was all, all about a transference. If you look at give, you know, you just give someone a gift. They don't have to do anything to receive it. But inheritance takes a transference. So Abram positioned himself to be able to, in a position to receive the inheritance of the land. And a lot of times as believers, we think, well, God, you said you were going to give me this. Well, it doesn't stop there. To inherit. That means you got to be in the right position to inherit. And I think in the natural, you know, when the inheritance is passed down, you have to go to the last will and testament. If it's an attorney, he's reading the last will and, tes and testament so you can see what has been transferred or passed down or what you have inherited. So you have to position yourself. When God moves you, how are you going to know what he's giving you if you don't show up for the meeting? You got to remember when God give you something, there's also something attached to that. You have to position yourself just like Abraham did to inherit it. It's, you know, it's just not he going to put it in your lap. But no, it requires obedience. It requires trust. It requires faith. So remember when God promises something, although he does give us gifts, he also has something attached to that so that you can inherit, which means positioning yourself to inherit the fullness of the promises of God. You, you know, and, and I, I need to make a correction. I said First Peter a little while ago. Mm -hmm. It's actually Second Peter 3 and 9 mm -hmm. uh, that, that speaks about God not being slack. And uh, Numbers 23 and 19, mm -hmm. that's where you find the statement, God is not a man. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I like what Second Corinthians 1 and 20 says. It makes the statement, uh, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. God is always a yes, yes God. Mm -hmm. I know I know there are a lot of songs out there that say when God say no, you know, we need <laughs> to but but listen, right. God is a yes God. Even when it sounds like he is saying no, he's still really saying yes. What do you mean? Whenever he tells you or stops you from going in a certain direction, it's not to hinder you. Mm -hmm. It's not to take you down. It's not a form of rejection, but God always lets us know, I've got a better plan. Yes. Follow my plan because mine is going to be the greater blessing. So in God, all his promises are yes, yes, uh, and, and amen. You know, I, I like the fact that whenever it comes to, to serving God, uh, we find in the next few verses it makes a statement about how they prepared to make a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in that day they divide, they took the, the sacrificial animal, they divided it in half and sprinkled blood around, and then the, uh, the ones who were coming in the covenant or making a promise to one another both parties would walk between the sacrificed mm -hmm. uh, animal that had been split in half mm -hmm. making their covenant but in mm -hmm. this particular episode the only one who walked between the sacrifices was God mm -hmm. so that was in essence God was saying I am building what I'm promising you, not on your abilities, mm -hmm. but on my abilities. Amen. I'm building on what I've promised to you, not by what you can do, or not even by what you can believe is uh, possible mm -hmm. in the sense that I'm taking the first step. God said, I am going to actually bless you. He made the statement to Abram, who's the father of our faith. He said, whoever blesses you, I'm going to bless them. Mm -hmm. Whoever curses you, I'm going to curse them. Did you know that we as God's uh, vessels, we as the seed of Abraham by faith, mm -hmm. we walk in that same authority? Amen. Stop fretting yourself about people talking bad about you. Okay. Stop feeling like there's something you need to do when folks are or throwing you under the bus or making you feel like that you are nothing or you are a nobody. Just remember, they're not doing it to you. They're doing it to themselves because Amen. if they curse you, then they're going to be cursed. Amen. If they bless you, then they're going to be blessed. You say, well, that was to Abraham. Go and read and study in your spare time the fourth chapter of Romans. The fourth chapter of Romans tells us that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. It tells us that circumcision didn't make uh, Abram righteous. Mm -hmm. Circumcision came 
after he was already redeemed by God. Mm -hmm. None of the rites and the passages that the, the Jewish people keep today, none of those saves them uh, under grace. Under grace, you are saved by faith. Uh, and, and, and that has absolutely nothing to do with works. Are you saved? Mm -hmm. Stop looking at what you're able to do and what laws and commandments you're able to keep mm -hmm. concerning the law and look at the law of grace. Amen. The law of grace does not work on the outside. The law of grace works on the inside. That's why Jesus told them, uh, the disciples, he said, when it comes to sin, he said, long before the sin is actually manifest on the outside in the flesh, it's committed in the heart. He wanted us to know, listen, you do not have to go sleep with someone to commit adultery. You do not have to go out and, and kill someone to commit murder. He said, when you have the wrong kind of mindset and the wrong feeling concerning your brothers or those others uh, in your heart, then you committed murder in, in uh, even then. Some folks say, well, I never heard anybody, but you have killed the influence of a lot of men and women by your mouth. That's well, right. if you have killed the influence of a man or woman because of something negative, you said you have committed murder. Mm -hmm. Go to the altar and ask God to forgive you because that's that's what it is. If you if you can say, well, ain't nothing wrong with looking at a good woman and ain't nothing wrong with just celebrating the beauty of a woman and say, oh man, I'd love to have that. When you start talking that way, you have just committed adultery. Amen. So you see, this the spirit Okay. Of the letter, not the, the, the letter of the law that we need to be recognizing. Mm -hmm. And God loves you. Mm -hmm. God wants you to make it in. And so that he could guarantee you're making it in, it is not dependent on your obeying him first. That's right. It's dependent on your believing in him first. That's good. Now let's go on to the next verse. And this is after Abraham prepared the sacrifices. In verse 13 it says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thou seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom thou shalt serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a, in a good old age. So the Lord still began to prophesy and speak to Abram concerning what's going to happen, you know, even the bondage period of his people and how they're still going to come out at a certain amount of time. And God will do that for us. He will tell us, you know, you may have to go through these things, but remember, just like he did with Abram, he said they're going to come out with great substance. So re re regardless of what you're going through, God has made you some promises. And he also told you the end of the matter because he knows the beginning. Hold on to what God has said. If he said you're going to be healed, well, you're going to be healed at the end of the matter. If he said you're going to come out better than you were before, well, believe that you're going to come out better than you were before. Just like he told Abram, yes, they're going to go through. They're going to be serving in this land, but they're also going to come out with great substance. And in today's um, generation, I think about how great substance can be anything. It can be great faith, great finance, great favor. Sometimes all you need is the favor of God. And he, it, it, in most cases, it's better than having the resources. So always remember when God makes a promise, he knows the beginning as well as the end. We just have to trust that through the process. And it's always a process. Just like with Abram, you know, it didn't happen overnight, but it did happen. So in the process, keep trusting, keep believing. That's all God requires of us. So when you begin to look at your life and the foundation mm -hmm. of your, uh, your uh, salvation in God, remember it's not by works that you're saved. Mm -hmm. It's by your faith. Amen. If you can believe God, I don't care how low things are. Mm -hmm. If you can believe God, then God will fulfill his promises mm -hmm. in your life. Now, when you look at Abram and you look at Sarah, they both um, missed God in several different episodes, mm -hmm. yet they couldn't break the commitment God had made to them because God, uh, when he could swear by none other that was strong enough, mm -hmm. he swore about or concerning only what he would do. Mm -hmm. See, when he could swear by none other, he swore by himself. So, you see, our salvation is not based on us. Our salvation is based on what God uh, has been able and is able to do. The Bible tells us that, that, that God uh, didn't sacrifice his son for the church mm -hmm. only. He didn't sacrifice himself for saved folk. He sacrificed him, his only begotten son for the world. Mm -hmm. God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. The world. 
the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son. You've got to recognize that God has made the first step toward you, mm -hmm. and all you have to do is believe that yes. he is. Accept him as your Lord and Savior, and he will do the rest. Now, as you learn of him, then you learn obedience through the things that you suffer. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we go through different things. We think that's the end of the road. Mm -hmm. We feel like, well, what's going on right now is God has rejected me, or, or God is not pleased with me, or, or God is punishing me. Darlings, many of the things you go through are teaching you how to properly obey the Lord. Oh, you got the faith in God. You believe in God. You know God is your God. You know God is not like man. You know that God's going to look out for you, but many times you don't know how to obey him. Some of the things that you're suffering through right now is just like the Lord Jesus. The Bible said he learned obedience through the things he suffered. So those bad things that are happening to you, those aggravating and frustrating things that are happening to you, just remember, you're learning obedience. Amen. And as you get to the end of chapter 15, when we're talking about in terms of Abraham, remember what God has said, count it as done. And I like how God, you know, if you pay attention, he talks in past tense sometimes, letting you know, look, it's done, past tense. If you look at that 18 verse, it says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. When you look at this, the word given, that means I've already done it. So whatever God has promised you, count it as done. When you count it as done, you can move on. And that's one of the things that I love about Apostle. He always looks ahead. He all he can Once one thing is accomplished, he's already moved on. It could be five years or ten years from now. But he's already moved on because he's confident that God has already did this thing. So remember, whatever God has promised, count it as done and move on and keep growing, keep, keep flourishing in the Lord. This is how we progress in God and truly have faith in him. And just remember this, it is not so much dependent on what you can do Amen. as it is dependent upon what God can do. Mm -hmm. If God said it, he will do it. Amen. If God spoke it, he will bring it to pass. Many of the things that are going on today, we can't change them. That's right. Why? Because God has sealed them by his word. Stop waiting for a voice to speak to you or for a vision from heaven. If you've got the word of God, study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman rightly dividing mm -hmm. the word of God. Remember, all the promises of God are yes, yes, and amen. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. All all of the promises are yes, yes, and amen. Amen. So thank you again for joining us today. And just remember, if God said it, that's all you need to do to believe it. So greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And with God, all things are possible to them that believe. God bless you. Love you. We're looking forward to being with you again in our next session together in the Word. Amen. God bless. God bless you.